All right, so uh, this is me. I'm Chris Kent, uh, development MVP, core team, all that stuff. Okay, all right, let's start starting with some cool stuff. So a couple weeks ago, I showed you some stuff on how to use, like, uh, index of as a function to do some contains, right, so we could see when, when we were inside a multi-select person column, right? <laughs> it's too much of a agree. All right, so and then we also did some stuff here. We did multi-choice icons, right? So we gave you some cool tips on how to use the index of to do contains or starts with. And that's all cool, but what if we want to go a little further? Let's make that so I can actually see it. There we go. All right. Now I can switch my tabs. Okay. So what if we had to do something where we don't just want to know ahead of time what they got, right? Uh, like in a person column, right, you could have, you know, 100,000 people in your organization. You can't prepare, you know, a special icon for each one of those. So we want to be able to do something cool, right? So let's say I've got... For example, I've got this very exciting choice column here. It just got letters as my choices. So it's a multi-choice column. Uh, hopefully, you'll catch up here in a second. If it doesn't catch up, just, uh, you know, uh, be, be sad and cry. Okay. Or, you know, rejoin, whatever you're going to do. Okay, so we come in here, and I'm going to go ahead and column say I'm going to format this column. All right, there we go. We can see that. I'm just going to take a very basic format. I'm going to paste that in there. And all this is going to do, if we take a look at it, it's just going to draw a div and put an A, and it's going to make some pretty squares. So I made a single square, and that's okay, right? Now, what if we want to actually draw an element, right, or even a complex element that's got multiple children, and we want to do lots of conditions per choice? Well, luckily, we can do exactly that uh, with the new for each property. So the cool thing is, here on our child property, we can come in here, and we can have this for each, which is brand new, as an FYI, it is not in the schema, so if you're using something like VS Code, I uh, expect it to get flagged. But trust me, it's working. It's magical. All right. Now, the cool thing is we come in here and we can type in our virtual field name, which I'll come back to and explain that in a second, in at current field, right? So what this is going to do is this is actually going to convert this element here into a template element. So now it will now create one, one element that this is nested in for every item in our array, in this case, every selected choice. Now, this choice iterator, you can name this whatever you want. So I'm saying best practice is to add the word iterator and you need to use the column type or the column name because you can clobber over things because you're creating a virtual field. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, we got to add a comma. All right, let's preview that. Ooh, look at that. Now we suddenly get a new element for every one of our choices there. And we can actually take advantage of those values. Now, I mentioned the idea of a virtual field. So our choice iterator became a virtual field. I'm going to copy that. So where I'm referencing things, say in the text content, instead of A, I can reference just like any other field syntax. Right? My choice iterator is now a field. I can do the same thing over here in the tool tip. Right? There. Now when I preview that, boom! Now we suddenly get those values, right? And we can start to see that everything gets pretty cool there. So you know, if, if we wanted to do something a little crazier where we come in here and we start editing stuff, we can. So we want to add, you know, additional things. We can access everything else just like we normally do. All right, so it's BG color. All right, we'll say, uh, we'll say our choice iterator again. So we're just going to access that, and we're going to say maybe it's not equal to C. That sounds good. All right, let's do the theme primary. You know, otherwise, let's do yellow for our color. All right, and we'll blank, 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 blank. What's that? And then we'll close that thing out. Let's see if we did that on the fly. Boom. So you get the idea here. So now you can start to do some really, really cool stuff. So as you can loop through your multiple person columns or your multiple choice columns, um, you can do everything you could do normally, but you get this idea of a templated element. And one thing to note is that you cannot use the for each and the root element up here, which makes sense when you think about it. You have to have a container for all these elements you're creating. So you can't do that until you get to at least one child down. But the nice thing is you can do this even further. So let's take a little a little further than this, okay? Let's go over here to our classic Warrior Horses site. Now, recently we all know that the uh, Warrior Horses went corporate. But even further, we've got several corporate initiatives, right? So one of those is more inclusivity. Is that a word? Inclusivity. I can't say that word. But uh, go with it. All right, so each horse is valuable, and they want to make sure they provide more visibility, um, to each of their individual horse slaves, right? So if we go here, we've got our classic uh, things, 
I already got this assigned to. Now, that's okay, and right, we, saw, we showed how we can work with that text before, right, when you got the join. But what if we did something like, you know, come back up here to our uh, SP dev list formatting, right, and we've got the, uh, you know, some of these samples, and we come down here, we have this cool one, uh, the person round image format, right? So this allows you to show a person with that cool little profile image. So we're just going to grab that. But this is designed to work with a single column, right, or a single choice person field. Yeah, there you go. All right, so I'm going to format this guy. Ooh, that's a big. Okay, we'll paste that in, and you'll notice that uh, that's a little screwy, right? So we got rid of the fact that we had multiple selected. It's really only able to act on that first one, and then even then not so successfully. Now, using what we just did, we can easily convert that. All right, so we can come in here and we can add that for each. So we can take that previous template, we can add a for each on it. Just a couple E there. I'm going to say person integrator. Again, that, that is made up by me. But I will tell you, if you use something like title, you'll never have access to the title field from then at that point forward. So just make sure you don't clobber it. Okay? I will add a nice uh, margin here so that they don't all stick together. All right. Oh, two pixels, that sounds fancy. All right, and then the only thing we need to do is down here where we're referencing our fields, we can again replace that. Let's go copy that so I have to type for the person iterator. All right, so now we can just come in here, and we can say, just like we would any other field, I'm going to grab that email, grab that title. Now we do something like that and we preview it. Boom! Now we start to get all sorts of different people. So this is really, really cool. But you'll notice we've got some issues here where anytime we get over three people, we start to get weird shrinkage. Nobody likes weird shrinkage. You quote me on that. All right. So we want to do something a little more elaborate. And the only way you can really do that um, is to know some things about where we are inside that loop, you know, and make some adjustments on that. So we want to do something very similar to the UI Fabric face pile, right? So we've got this thing where we want to show a couple people, and when it starts to not look good anymore, or we want to show this kind of uh, descriptive overflow button where we show how many other people were in there, right? So how can we do that? Well, the only real way to do that, um, okay, I need to turn off my notifications. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the only way we can really do that is to start using something called loop index. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that one here. So we've got some samples. Uh, let's see. So if we come back to our column samples, uh, that one from before I just showed you, the multi-choice uh, for each is there with those letters. So it's a pretty simple or not simple. It's just a straightforward version of the for each. We also have this new one here, which is the multi-person face pile. So if I come in here and I grab this, I'm just going to grab it, and then we'll go through what it's doing. I feel like you guys aren't actually having a conversation. You're just messing with me. Okay, paste that, preview that. Ooh, fancy. So what's actually happening there, right? How did we accomplish that? Well, that's where we get this cool new guy called loop index. So we come in here and we can say our display all right, is if the loop index on the person iterator is greater than or equal three. So what does that mean? So the loop index is a zero-based index of where you are inside your for each loop. Outside of a for each loop, it uh, means nothing. But when you do that, you can specify through a string whatever iterator name you chose. So whatever your virtual field name is, put that here. Don't use the, uh, you know, all this stuff to get that, but you just put it in here. The reason you have to specify that is because you can nest all of these for each loops. Okay? So we put this. So all we're doing is saying, hey, if you've got more than, than three of these, stop showing, right? All right? And then we come down here and we say, hey, to our standard image element, we're doing a quick check to say, hey, if you've got more, we're using the length function, which says how many actually selected items we have, so how many people we have. We take a look at that. We say, if you've got more than three of those, you know, don't display this if you're not on the third one. I know you review this logic later, but the idea here is we want to show it normally if there's three or less, and if there's more than three, we want to show this kind of extra element. So we've got this extra element we've stuck in here that's not a part of our for each loop, right? So the for each loop, well, that is part of the for each loop, but on the for each loop, dang, my gosh, I'm so distracted by this notification. Okay, so we got this cool thing here where we're just checking to say, hey, if you've got more than three and you're on the third one because it's zero-based index, 
uh, then show it. Otherwise, uh, hide this little thing here. So that's all we're doing. So the cool thing is now we can start to do stuff where we can apply these complex objects, right? And again, we can nest these. We can have multiple children, and we can reference their values all throughout it. We can also tell where we are. So if we wanted to tell where the last one was, we could do all that. And so it's pretty really, it's really powerful stuff. So if you haven't checked out the for each loop, which of course you haven't because it's brand new, now you can. All right. Uh, one last thing to note is uh, down here, I'm doing something where I'm just determining what that number is. Plug here, where when you go to minus uh, a number from a complex field, you'll need to wrap it in parentheses. If you're interested, uh, there's an issue and you can follow along on all that. All right. Uh, we'll get it. Let's go back here. So to review the for each, this is it. Do not add it to the root element. It will not work. You'll get an error. You will cry. All right, but it'll turn your element into a template and it's repeated for each item in the array. If you don't want it repeated for each item in the array, say like we did with the people, you can use that loop index to determine where you are in the array and cancel some of that stuff based on the values, either of the fields or other fields, or based on the actual position in the loop it is. All right, and again, creates the virtual field. You can nest these. And for loop index, it's zero based, it is the position, and uh, you make sure, this is the weird one, right? So don't forget your single quotes around your iterator name. If you forget those, you might be kind of sad. All right, and moving on here. Here's your resources. So check out the full documentation there. There's two new samples that both handle the for each. There's the multi-choice for each and the multi-person face pile. I've shown you both as column samples, but these can be used within view formatting as well. So you can use those with that row formatter element, no problem. And if you're looking for a little more detail, you can check out this link here, and this will take you to a full write-up of everything we talked about in the blog. I don't know if that's a link. But that's it. That's all I got today. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Uh, awesome stuff, as always. Uh, so let me actually move in the, back on the slides, because we continue from there. Uh, quite a lot of people actually participating on the, on the discussion on the window as well. So really good. Really, really cool stuff, and good to get that one recorded as well. And like you've seen, Chris always provides the samples, and the samples are available. There was a question related on, is this available out of the box in uh, SharePoint Online? Answer is yes, the column formatting and view formatting is on SharePoint Online in modern lists and libraries, and those are getting rendered properly also in list web parts. And if you embed any of the SharePoint pages, SharePoint lists uh, directly in Teams, uh, everything is included in the Teams rendering as well. So um, that's absolutely available.